viewers, in this trailer, you'll get a sneak peek at our ongoing free docu-series on the Manson family. In episode 12, The Wizard, viewers were introduced to Charles Watson, an enterprising young Texan. Watch here how a chance hitchhiking encounter brought Manson's chief assassin into the family. Then subscribe to this channel to watch every episode of the docu-series plus all of our bonus content where we discuss the family, their crimes, and the ongoing implications more than 50 years later. In the last episode of this docu-series, you were introduced to Beach Boys drummer Dennis Wilson. Wilson met Charles Manson and his family in the late spring of 1968 and allowed them to move into his Pacific Palisades home. He also vowed to help Manson launch a career in the music industry and introduced him to many of his successful and famous friends. Dennis was a troubled soul searching for the truth. He thought he had found that truth when he met Charles Manson. At the end of May, Dennis Wilson found himself on Sunset Boulevard without a ride home. He stuck out his thumb, a 1935 Dodge pickup truck pulled over, and the driver offered him a lift. Dennis got in and began talking with the man, a 22-year-old from Texas. Dennis asked the man if he'd like to visit his home in the Pacific Palisades. The Texan was Charles Denton Watson, who moved to L.A. the summer before. Born December 1945 in Farmersville, Texas, same town as American war hero Audie Murphy, Charles spent his entire childhood in this small town near Dallas, his parents owned a gas station. His cousin was the local sheriff. Watson had been an honors student, active in the Future Farmers of America program. He played football in high school and was editor of his high school newspaper. He later pledged a fraternity at North Texas State University. But in college, Charles began to use drugs and alcohol. He was also quite a ladies' man. He suddenly took on a devil-may-care attitude that didn't sit well with his staid Christian folks. His freshman year, Watson broke into his former high school and stole several typewriters as a fraternity initiation. In his words, Part of the fraternity initiation was a scavenger hunt. My partner and I had to find, among other things, four typewriters. Through the beer-soaked fog, I remembered the typing class at Farmersville High School with row on row of battered royals. Getting them was easy. Break the glass, open the door, giggle a lot, and shush each other boozily. It seemed extremely funny. The next day, with a throbbing hangover, four typewriters, and the certainty of being caught, it seemed extremely stupid. Rather than have them find out from someone else, I went to my parents myself. They took it hard. And as we drove into McKinney, the county seat, to talk to a lawyer, they couldn't have been any more upset if I'd committed murder. In January 1967, Watson got a job with Braniff Airlines at the Dallas-Fort Worth Airport as a baggage handler. He used his employee Miles to regularly fly himself and his girlfriends to Los Angeles, sometimes visiting Southern California fraternities and indulging in the West Coast drug culture. That August, he moved to L.A. It is rumored that Watson arrived in California with more than $4,000, perhaps evidence that he was dealing drugs even before leaving Texas, since that amount of money seems much higher than a baggage handler might earn in eight months. He enrolled at Cal State Los Angeles, but never attended class. Watson rented an apartment in Silver Lake with a roommate, and began selling wiglets, or wig pieces, that gals fashionably wore those days to give the appearance of longer, fuller hair. He'd walk along the Sunset Strip, offering women the chance to buy a really cheap wiglet to get them into the shop, where senior sales staff would attempt to upsell them a more expensive piece. Charles got a kickback from each wig purchased, but that wasn't enough. With his roommate Rich, he opened his own wig shop on Sunset Boulevard, Love Locks. By then, he was also dealing marijuana. Within two to three months, everything was going to pot, and the wig shop shut down. 
a car accident in early 68 badly damaged his knee, a disability Watson later maximized to get out of his scheduled army physical. He was heading to the beach a few weeks after the injury to chill out when he ran into Wilson hitchhiking. Dennis told Watson about the harem of hippie girls living in his pad and about their guru, Charlie. For a moment, Watson was confused upon arrival at Wilson's house. The first person he saw was a fat, balding man. That turned out to be Dean Morehouse. Watson met Charlie just a few minutes later. The Texan saw the bevy of girls around the diminutive Manson and liked what he saw. There was a chance to sell drugs. There was more than a chance to get laid. Plus, he could hang out with superstars. Watson virtually moved into Dennis's home, sometimes bunking with Dean in the pool house. He was so personable. He could have sold homes, cars, magazines, or anything but wicks on Southern California beaches. Dean later took Watson on his first acid trip, although he'd been smoking grass and hash for months and was introduced to speed earlier. Not long after, the young man tried cocaine for the first time. Watch the entire episode of The Wizard and all episodes of the Manson Family docuseries here at YouTube by subscribing to this channel. Thank you.